Hello and welcome to World Stories on Viewer Television. I am Deborah Ndukaifi. This week we'll take a look at top stories making the rounds from across the globe. Major headlines in the week under review includes Indonesia Stadium Stampede leaves 125 dead to Russia-Ukraine crisis. Furthermore, hurricanes iron death tolls climb past 80. We'll bring you these stories and more after this short break. Don't go away. Now starting from the African scene, officials in Chad had extended the transition period towards democratic elections and said they would keep Mohamed Idris Deby on as head of state in the interim. Delegates also agreed for the military leader to be eligible to run for the presidency when elections are held. The decisions were made by a National Reconciliation Dialogue Forum. The National Reconciliation Dialogue Forum had been boycotted by most opposition parties two out of three key armed rebel groups and civil society organizations. This decision will face resistance from political party, civil society and the African Union, says Chadian political scientist Evarist Ngalem. Chad had also endured repeated uprisings and unrest since gaining independence from France in 1960. Russia unleashed a lethal barrage of strikes against multiple Ukrainian cities, Monday smashing civilians targets including downtown Kyiv, where at least six people were killed amid burnt out cars, shattered buildings that brought back into focus the grim reality of war after months of easing tensions in the capital. Police said a total of at least 10 people were killed and around 60 others were wounded in the morning attacks across the country. The country's emergency service said nine people were killed. The conflicting numbers couldn't be immediately reconciled. Russian President Vladimir Putin, whose military invaded neighboring Ukraine on February 24, said the strikes were in retaliation for what he called Kiev's terrorist actions, a reference to Ukraine's attempts to repel Moscow's invasion forces and cripple their supply lines. Brazil's veteran leftist Luiz Nacio Lula da Silva, who will face far-right incumbent Jair Bolsonaro in October 30th presidential runoff, vows to continue fighting until the final victory after failing to achieve an outright win in the first election round. Afterwards, he addressed his supporters from a balcony on Polista Avenue in Sao Paulo and told them that he would win the election again. Lula, as is universally known, took 48% to Bolsonaro, 43% Brazil's electoral court said with 99% of votes counted as of 10.21 p.m. That tally leaves Lula with the simple, without the simple majority needed for victory and sets the two up for a bruising face-off in what has already been divisive, being a divisive election campaign. Primeiro turno, parece que o destino gosta de me fazer trabalhar um pouco mais. French Prime Minister Elizabeth Bonn arrived in Algeria on Sunday with a top level delegation for a visit aimed at improving ties with the former French colony and major gas exporter. Her two day trip, along with 16 ministers, over a third of her government comes just six weeks after President Emmanuel Macron concluded a three day visit that sought to end months of tension with Algiers. Prime Minister Amene welcomed the delegation at the captain's main airport 
Bonn is expected to sign deals on economic cooperation, including energy, although deliveries of natural gas to France are not on the table, according to her office. Phones on silence, please. Israeli's force haunts a Palestinian suspected of killing an 18-year-old military policewoman in East Jerusalem, an attack that left another Israeli in critical condition from a gunshot wound to the head. The shooting at a checkpoint by the Palestinian refugee camp of Shuafat in Israeli and next East Jerusalem came amid spiraling violence in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. As earlier, two Palestinian teenagers were shot dead in an Israeli raid in the West Bank as the United Nations warned that mounting violence in the occupied Palestinian territory was fueling a climate of fear, hatred and anger. Police said the alleged Shuafat gunman, a 22-year-old Palestinian president of East Jerusalem, was driven to the checkpoint by an accomplice. He got out of the car, opened fire and ran into the camp as the driver sped away. The driver is the dead Israeli soldier was identified as Noah Lazar. Now the death toll from the Hurricane Ian climbed past 80 on Sunday as embattled residents in Florida and the Carolinas faced a recovery expected to cost tens of billions of dollars and some officials faced criticism over their response to the storm. And one of the most powerful storms to hit the United States flattened whole neighborhoods and knocked out power lines and bridges as it made landfall on Florida's southwestern coast last Saturday, last Wednesday rather. Wind-driven storm surges and immense downpours left even inland neighborhoods submerged with search and rescue teams continuing to look for victims. After crossing over Florida, Ian headed out to the Atlantic, but tuned and made landfall again in South Carolina as a Category 1 storm, while bringing heavy rains and, storm and strong winds to North Carolina as well. The Florida Medical Examiner's Commission confirmed eight, 58 deaths to be attributed to the hurricane, while North Carolina's governor said four people had died due to Ian. The World Health Organization has confirmed 63 cases of Ebola virus infection, including 29 deaths in Uganda, calling for clinical trials of new vaccines in the country. WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus gave the confirmation at a news conference at the United Nations Health Agency's headquarters in Geneva. According to him, the organization is working diligently in Uganda to support the government in responding to an Ebola outbreak in four districts. Gebrisis says 10 infected health workers, four out of whom had died and four people had recovered while receiving follow-up care. In the last uh, 48 hours, we also have one additional uh, confirmed uh, case bringing the total of to 44. We have uh, confirmed days of 10, uh, unfortunately, of the 44 uh, cases uh, confirmed, we have 10 health workers, which has been uh This year's Nobel Prize in Economic Sciences has been awarded to the former chair of the United States Federal Reserve, Bernice Banaki, and two US-based economists, Douglas W. Diamond and P. Philip H. DeVig for research on banks and financial crisis. The prize was announced by the Nobel Panel at the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in Stockholm. Mm -hmm. The committee said their work had shown in their research why avoiding bank collapses in vi is vital. Nobel Prizes carry a cash award of 10 million Swedish kronor and will be handed out on December 10th. A week of Nobel Prize announcements kicked off October 3rd with Swedish scientist Sante Pabo receiving the award in medicine for unlocking secrets of Neanderthal DNA that proved, provided key insights into our immune system. President Vladimir Zelensky says Russia targeted Ukraine's energy infrastructure during Monday's strike across the country, including Iran made drones. Strikes were reported in multiple cities across Ukraine, including rare attacks on the capital Kyiv and western Lviv region. 
Zelensky says attacks also took place in Dnipro, Venetia and ivano frankivsk in central Ukraine, Zaporizhia in the south and Kharkiv and some regions in the east amongst others. Львів і Дніпро, Вінниця, Франківщина, Запоріжжя, Сумщина, Харківщина, Житомирщина, Кіровоградщина, Південь держави. Вони прагнуть паніки і хаосу, хочуть знищити нашу енергосистему. Вони безнадійні. Друга мішень – це люди. The International Monetary Fund Chiefs Kristalina Georgieva has urged world policy makers to take concerted motion to keep away from a harmful new regular because the dangers of a worldwide recession are pushed ever increased by repeated financial shocks. In a speech forward of the fund's annual conferences subsequent week, the IMF's managing director mentioned it was crucial to stabilize the worldwide economic system by addressing probably the most instant challenges together with rampant inflation. Georgieva mentions that policy makers must act collectively to forestall this era of heightened fragility from changing into a harmful new regular. She however warns that method can be painful and that if central banks transfer too aggressively to tamp, to tamp down value pressures, it may set off an extended financial downturn. At the IMF, we are calling for early and joint action to regroup and to rethink how can we adopt a more proactive, precautionary mindset than we had in the past. Now we will begin on a short break and when we come back, world story continues. First century where all the information we need is now in the palm of our hands. News from around the world, entertainment, celebrity gossip, sports, and much more. The only thing that you need is the right source. TV is now on the go. Simply check us out on our social media pages on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter for all the information you need.
In the blistering desert of Morocco, the country's last nomad said the Haitian lifestyle has become impossible to sustain as climate change brings ever more intense droughts. Now, according to the last census, just 25,000 people in Morocco were nomadic in 2014, down by two thirds in just a decade. The report, take a listen. As climate change brings about higher temperature and harsher drought, these barber nomads say their way of life is under threat. The Ait Aysel Izem tribe has spent centuries roaming the country to find food for their animals, but their numbers are dwindling. Just 25,000 people are educated in Morocco. We're nomadic in 2014, according to the last census. This is down by two thirds in just a decade. This year, Morocco was hit with its worst drought in four decades. A soldier stands guard outside the town hall of San Miguel to Tolapan, where the walls are strewn with bullet holes after at least 20 people were killed including the mayor when gunmen stormed the building in the southern part of the country in a broad daylight attack. Prosecutor Sandra Luz Valdovinos told Mileno newsmen that the attack happened in San Miguel to Tolapan in Guerrero State. Two others were injured, she said. Mayor Corrado Mendoza was among those killed. Press reports said the attack in broad daylight was staged by the loss Tequilores Gang, which is affiliated with a powerful drug cartel called Jalisco Nueva Generacion. Prolonged torrential rain has caused flooding in different areas in Jakarta. At least three people have died in the Indonesian capital after a flood surged into a school and caused a wall to collapse. Espart says, Rising seas and stronger tides as a result of a climate change are some of the causes. The gradual sinking of the land and development are also to be blamed. Udah dua, udah seminggu ini udah dua kali. Tapi ya baru kemarin itu cuma sampai sepinggang kalau tadi udah lebih dari sepinggang sih. Kira-kira hampir ada 15 mobil tim tanki suku dinas kehutanan yang membantu penyedotan air. Iranian President Ibrahim Rahisi has ordered an investigation into clashes in the southeastern province of Sistan Baluchistan last week that left dozens dead, including military officers, his office said. State media in Iran characterized the unrest that started on September 30th after Friday prayers as attacks by extremists on police stations in the provincial capital Zahidin that killed a commander of the Revolutionary Guards, the Iranian army's ideological arm, by a local religious leader who had warned last week that the community was inflamed after a recent case involving the alert rape of a teenage girl by police officers said that the force shot unarmed civilians. The Prime Minister Prayut Shan Ocha and his deputy visit the hospital where survivors of a mass shooting at a nursery are being treated. An ex policeman murdered nearly 2,000 children on Thursday at the nursery school in one of the kingdom's worst mass killing. According to the National Police Chief Gen General Damongas, 38 people, including the gunman, died as a result of the attack. 
The victims include 24 children with some as young as two years old, according to local media. At least 10 others were injured, including six critically, a police spokesman told the Associated Press. The Nobel Chemistry Prize was on Wednesday awarded to a trip of chemists from the U.S. and Denmark who laid the foundation for a more functional form of chemistry. Americans Caroline Betrosi, Betosi and Barry Shapless, together with Denmark's Morten Meldal, and were honored for the development of clique chemistry and biotogonal chemistry, the jury said. The award marks the second Nobel for 81 year old Shapless, who won the Chemistry Nobel in 2001. Only four other individuals have achieved the feat, including Polish born French woman Marie Curie. The trial will share the Nobel Award, some of 10 million Swedish kroner. Now, the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics has been won by three researchers for the work on quantum mechanics, Allen Aspect. John F. Closier and Anton Zelinga have won the 10 million Swedish kroner prize announced on Tuesday by the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences in Stockholm, making them the 116th winners of the prize since it was first awarded in 1901. All three will receive an equal share of the prize according to the official citation for the award. The prize was given for experiments with entangled photons, establishing the violation of Bell inequalities and pioneering quantum information science. The three physicists works has the three physicists' work has focused on exploring how two particles interact, behaving like a single unit, even when they are far apart. The Nobel Prize in Chemistry will be announced on Wednesday. At least 125 people, including 32 children, died in Indonesia's stadium crush as police moved to punish those responsible for, the, for, the, for one of the deadliest disasters in football history. This report looks at the tragedy which, looks, which took place on the 1st of October. In one of the deadliest disasters in football history, at least 125 people have been killed and around 323 injured at a football match in Indonesia after officers fired tear gas in a packed stadium causing a stampede. Dozens of children caught in the chaos lost their lives. In one of the deadliest disasters in football history, at least 125 people have been killed and around 323 injured at a football match in Indonesia after officers fired staggers in a parked stadium causing a stampede. Dozens of children caught in the chaos lost their lives. Untuk melakukan upaya upaya pencegahan sampai dilakukan gas air mata karena sudah nafis, sudah mulai menyerang petugas, sudah merusak mobil dan akhirnya karena gas air mata mereka pergi keluar ke satu titik. The police have described the incident as a riot and said two officers were killed. But football supporters and survivors are calling for justice following the tragedy. Ibaratnya kayak manusukan tapung dikasih lubang kecil habis itu dikasih asap. Bagaimana dengan merasakan sendiri? Indonesia President Widodo ordered compensation for victims' families of 50 million rupiah. That's a total of $3,200. Air. Jangan sampai ada lagi tragedi kemanusiaan seperti ini di masa yang akan datang. Saya juga telah perintahkan kepada Menpora, Kapolri, dan Ketua Umum PSSI untuk melakukan evaluasi menyeluruh tentang pelaksanaan pertandingan sepak bola dan juga prosedur pengamanan penyelenggaraannya. Outside the stadium, fans paid their respects to the victims of the tragedy. FIFA's president, Giano Infantino, has called the tragedy a dark day for football. Menedi Livinos, viewer television news. The police have described the incident as a riot and said two officers were killed, but football supporters and survivors are calling for justice following the tragedy. Indonesian President Wildodo ordered compensation for victims' families of 50 million rupiah, that's a total of $3,200. Um, 
Outside the stadium, fans paid their respects to the victims of the tragedy. FIFA's president, Gianni Infantino, has called the tragedy a dark day for football. Now, hundreds of abandoned bicycles in a small warehouse in the town of Zelandosk, near Ukraine's southern front line, tell the stories of the owners who were forced to flee Russia's invasion. They came, they came in all colors, green, red, blue, black. One has a knitted saddle cover, another a small pouch attached attached to the frame. Many others look rusty and tested by the time. Take a look at the story bicycles waiting for the return of their owners. More than 600 abandoned bicycles lie in this warehouse, 15 kilometers from Ukraine's front line. They've been left behind after their owners were forced to flee Russia's invasion. Там якась сумка ще була, оставалась на велосипеді, забирала, ніде там резина, мішки, ну люди, як, як їх застали, так вони її. Around 50 owners have now returned to collect their bicycles. Допомога, да. Чувствую, що сліза, кого я знаю, де взагалі знаю, не знаю, наші люди повертаються, то дуже раді. Ukraine has been staging a counter-offensive in the east, despite Russian President Putin annexing four parts of the country occupied by Russia. Zainab Ibrahim, Viewer Television News. Bike storage worker Ukraine has been staging More a counter-offensive despite Russian President Putin annexing four parts of the country occupied by Russia. And that's all on World Stories. Many thanks for watching. I am Deborah Ndokaife. Please stay tuned and enjoy the rest of our programs.